Hello, in this lesson we are going to cover what is blockchain. So what is blockchain? I've got a little diagram right here. Blockchain is the core foundation of many cryptocurrencies and a bunch of other platforms as well. The reason we have got a question mark here is due to the fact that most people when they think of blockchain, they think of cryptocurrencies and on top of that when they think of cryptocurrencies they think of Bitcoin this is the ethereum logo there are more than two cryptocurrencies and there are more than three different applications for crypto for blockchain later on in this series I will cover other applications for blockchain but a lot of the time I will be referring to currencies in one form or another but the process, the ideology, the philosophy behind blockchain is essentially the same. So what is blockchain? This amazing technology that powers most cryptocurrencies and powers Bitcoin, which as of now, I believe is worth about the market cap for Bitcoin is about $70 billion and it is growing immensely. So yeah, why is it so good? What is blockchain? The simple way to think of the simple way to think of blockchain is a database. It really is not much more than a database. And you might be thinking, well, databases have been around for a very long time before we had them in digital form we had them in well written form in the form of let's say some sort of ledger or something else especially in the finance industry and yeah that's true we've had databases for a very long time and even in the digital realm but databases generally have been centralized and what that essentially means is one party owned the database they were the trusted authority for maintaining updating and also we trusted that authority to make sure the transactions they were recording whether they were financial transactions or otherwise they were legitimately recording the transactions the way they had occurred whereas with blockchain block chain uses a distributed system which is decentralized I will create a whole another video covering exactly what distributed and decentralized platforms are and how they compare to centralized platforms. But what this essentially means is no one entity has control over the transactions and therefore it helps reduce the potential for hacking. It helps reduce the potential for fraud. So whether that's legitimate or illeg illegitimate problems with the system, it helps reduce that. One word you might come across when you hear blockchain, or more specifically cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but they're essentially referring to the blockchain, is unhackable or tamper proof. I know that is four words. And though it is immensely difficult to hack blockchain or any application of blockchain and affect it, history has shown that anything that has bared the name on hackable tamper proof, it's secure to the point you can never be accessed, has pretty much always, in one form or another, been proven false. So I would take this with a grain of salt.
that is meant to be a grain of salt. So yeah, I would take it with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, it could potentially happen. But as you advance through this course, you'll realize the immense complexity of trying to hack a blockchain based system. So as I mentioned earlier, blockchain is nothing more than a database and you will hear the word ledger thrown around more than database but that's all it is it's just a way of recording transactions so imagine if we have this little ledger this database and we say person a sends 10 units of something where it's 10 pounds or 10 dollars to person b and let's say person b sends it to person c they send seven units of the same currency or whatever that unit is we know that person a has 10 less now person b has 10 more now and person C also has 7 more now I've missed out a step which is person B has 7 less because they did transfer some money as well so though they received it they have transferred it as well so that's essentially what a ledger or a database might look like but with blockchain all of the users on the system that are mining and we'll cover exactly what mining is at a later date have a record of this advanced ledger database so if one person was to say change this transaction or let's say even remove it if all of the others are saying this transaction did occur or didn't occur as the case may be then it would come to a majority vote and say the majority vote wins and this did or did not occur and as you can imagine think about marking papers so a mathematical paper 4 plus 3 equals 7 a very simple math problem but imagine if one person looked at a math paper and they had a hundred questions to mark it is more than probable that an individual marking a single paper may get the marking wrong for one particular question so they may say this is incorrect even though it isn't it is correct but imagine if 10 people were to mark the paper and 9 said it was correct and one one said it was incorrect based on this based on this from a statistical point of view you can say that the nine are correct and imagine if you just do this even further instead of 10 people marking it 100 people a thousand a million people and out of a million if only a few people are saying that this answer to this question is incorrect you can say statistically speaking it is not incorrect and those people for whatever reason have made a mistake whether it's, they have maliciously done that or they've just made a honest mistake and that's the benefit of a decentralized distributed ledger so it removes the idea of trusted third parties which essentially come in the form of banks whether that's using some sort of system like visa paypal 
MasterCard or anything else. So that's essentially what it removes. Each miner, each person validating the transactions essentially almost becomes the verifier as these people would be. All transactions are logged and the time, the date, the participants. So if person A, same way to person B, person A and B will be the participants. The amount or what is actually transacted using blockchain is also recorded within the blockchain. Each node and system on the network owns a full copy of the blockchain. But like I said, miners are used to verify the validity of a transaction. So miners, miners verify the validity of a transaction slash block and transactions are grouped into blocks so if we have this block this might have a bunch of transactions let's just think of it as financial transactions person a sending money to person b person c sending money to person d etc etc so this is a block and this block once it has been verified is added onto the chain so imagine if we have a block here it is added onto the chain and when another block has been validated it is added onto the chain again and what you can do is go through the chain and see where all the transactions have come from how they've arrived so imagine we have a a banknote, a conventional banknote that is for ten dollars. Realistically, we do not know where this ten dollars has come from. Maybe my parents have given it me, maybe my father handed it to me, but where did he get it from? Where did that individual get it from, etc. etc. Using blockchain, we can go all the way back and see where he originally came from, and we can also see that he didn't initially start off as let me just get rid of that, draw it a little better. He didn't initially start off as ten dollars, it was a bunch of one dollar transactions that eventually formed into ten dollars maybe my dad received ten one dollars from some from ten different people and he gave me the ten dollars maybe he went to the bank and he changed those ten one dollars into a single ten dollar note and that's what he gave me but i don't know that whereas with the blockchain system it allows you to see the transaction of i'm saying money in this case where exactly it has come from and where it is going and all of this is backed let me do the b again that doesn't look very good backed by mathematics using using hashing functions miners verify hash values so that's essentially a overview of what blockchain is in one simple word it is a data base Nothing more, essentially.
nothing less. That is the best way to think of it. It is a distributed decentralized database. We'll have several other videos covering mining, covering what wallets are, something that we haven't even talked about yet, how all of this process links together, how cryptography comes into it in the form of hashes, how the mathematics of it all work, and how the security works. So stay tuned for those videos.